Uh, before I start, can you uh, do me a favor? Turn to the person beside you and say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I, woke up this, I woke up this morning and I said, I think I missed two weeks. <laughs> so I said Merry Christmas right away. Um, I don't know what your week was like. Uh, my week was a little difficult. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just spilled some hot chocolate underneath my seat there before I got up. Um, but uh, I had the privilege of uh, working with three or four churches. I brought this up because I'm going to leave this with you as a sample. Uh, as I take it out, uh, I'm going to show you what's in it. So we have uh, Bible, right? We have socks. This bag is for women. Right. We have soup. soup. All right, soup. That's uh, it's easy because you can just put that soup in a cup that's hot water, and you're good to go. Uh, we have a thermos, uh, soap, uh, hot paws. You know when you put in your thing. Uh, Tim Hortons cards, five dollars. Toothpaste, toothbrush, and granola bars. All right. So I'll leave that. For you. Um, I work with youth a lot and it was a good week. It started off as a good week and then it became a sad week for me because I teach youth how to read the Bible and I teach youth how to pray and how to go to church. Saying, I was well done by the way. And to really love God. And then Friday, uh, it's been a month. I told people about it, and on Friday I said, can you come because I'm going downtown with uh, about uh, 20 kids to uh, um, give some bags to the homeless. And nobody could make it. And I always say to myself, what is the point in knowing about God if you're not going to do anything about it? We can go to church all we want. We can pray all we want. When it comes to actually working for God, we don't do it. And I ask you something, what's the point? You're stopping at just knowing and being convicted. You know, in the Bible, it even has that. You have so many people that went up to Jesus, and they were so convicted, right? I felt something. And the problem now is we feel a lot of things, but not enough to do anything. And so the challenge is, it's not Christmas, because I go right into uh, Philippians. I've been studying Philippians. If you could turn with me to Philippians chapter 4, we're going to read 14 to 19. Philippians chapter 4, 14 to 19. And if you have it, can we all rise as we read Philippians chapter 4, verse 14 to 19. You can follow me with your eyes as I read Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 to 19. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians also know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You can take your seats. So if you look at the writing of Paul to the Philippians in Philippi, there are many moving parts in this scenario, right? You have God as providential, right? He provides so many things. You can see it here. As a matter of fact, before this is one of the greatest verses that people love to talk about. 413. It's the Steph Curry verse, right? I can do all things through Christ. And then you jump into here, where uh, the Philippians sent Paul a gift. And Paul was very thankful for the gift and commended them for the gift. So not only are we talking about God providing, 
We're also talking about contentment. You know, I, I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to give when I'm not contented. Because I like what I like. You know, I don't even have to defend that. That's just the selfishness of human beings. And that's why sometimes pride gets in the way. Oh, no, well, that's it. I told you before, there is a big difference between a skeptic and a cynic. Big difference. And I see that all the time. Not only in understanding um, knowledge, accepting gifts, being relational. There is a huge difference. So the message here is really about giving. Not only just giving, uh, giving of money. That's what it is here. You see, if we said to a church, okay, we're, we're going to speak about making money. Oh, oh man, you're going to be full. Now come next week, we're going to talk to you about making money. Everybody will show up. You bring your friends and you that. I've been on those, I've been many of well, those networking. Oh, I've many, 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 many. My friends are like, Marv, come. Okay, listen. But if we said we're speaking about giving money, who's going to come? Who's going to come? Who's going to show up? It's a sensitive topic, but it's a necessary topic. Nobody likes to speak about it. I love speaking about it. It's, God didn't give me too much money, so I like speaking about it. So there's a letter. Um, this was a conference that I went to, and I had a chance to make the notes, and the speaker was very good. So I drafted as much as I could from that. There was a letter from a boy to his dad. You guys who go to school, you know every time you call your dad, you're asking for money, right? When you're in school, I love you, I need something, right? It's, it's always the okay. case. So the boy wrote to dad, ready? <coughs> Dear dad, no fun, no fun, your son. The dad writes back to the son. Dear son, too bad, I'm sad, your dad. It's always awkward when we're asking and giving especially in church, in the work. Because a lot of things come into play. When we give as Christians, here's our thought, I lost something. That's your thought. That's why it's hard. It's just, that's just logic. I lose this if I give it to you. But in God's kingdom, when you let go, you gain. How do you understand that? Except when you're emotional, you let it go when it comes back. It's real love. I know, I know, I know. It's amazing to me how to really understand this. And some people say, well, it's, it's a matter of perspective. Take your eyes out of this. Take everything you know out of this. And then understand it this way. If you have your bank in heaven... It's a lot better than having your heaven in your bank. If you don't understand how to have money, how to give money, how to give to the kingdom of God, you brought heaven down to your level. Therefore, you give your way, not God's way. If I give God's way, it doesn't make sense. It hurts too much. Because God's kingdom is sacrifice. Your kingdom is gain. So Paul writes about this. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you do what you do, and when you stand before God, you will have nothing. I always remind myself this. Ultimately, in front of God, at the end of ends, we are all naked at that time. There is no more wealth at that time. There's no discussion of wealth. There's no priority of wealth. There's no objections of wealth. Yet here, that's all we do. Why are we practicing that when that's not even a discussion in front of God? We don't put time in it in heaven, but we put all the time here. There's no wealth when we're talking to God. At that time, there's no discussion of money. At that time, there is no discussion of titles. Who are you? Who am I? What does it matter? Who is God? There's no wealth talk. 
There's no money talk. There's no titles. Ready? And when you stand before God, there's no more things such as influence. But those are the things we fight for. We cry for. We starve for. We live for. We are for. So you forgot who you are. First Timothy 6, you cannot take 